Good morning, everybody. Uh, if you've seen my earlier post, maybe you had seen that I considered doing a Lisa Simpson electric guitar, and it is come to fruition. I definitely want to do this guitar. So, after having so much fun building the Bart Simpson electric guitar, I figured, you know, it's time to do a Lisa Simpson guitar as well. So. And then there might be a Homer and Maggie and you know, all the rest of the crew eventually. But yeah, the first two are going to be Bart and Lisa. And then I'll put Lisa in really stylistic uh, cursive and black uh, spray paint. And then my logo, of course. But yeah, the single, uh, single space dual humbucker. Um, with the, this bridge I'm going to use and probably the chrome knob, probably use all the hardware. Input jack I'm guessing is probably going to be uh, right there under the foot. Probably a circular one or, or a round one. But yeah, in the same sort of scenario as the, the Bart Simpson guitar, I'm going to drum out all the lines and everything like that. Uh, instead of the volume and tone being in the eyes, it's going to be all the way down here. Um, and actually, I was thinking as far as I'll see how it weighs with three pieces of wood. It's a little heavy, top heavy. I could always do the center. I could always cut out and have it hollow just in the center piece. So it'll be the top piece and the back piece complete. But in the center, it'll be hollow up to a certain point. And I still want to keep the stability. But I think there'll be enough wood there definitely for for strength and everything like that and as far as painting the paint scheme concerned I, I want to do it like the original drawing I want to do the darker yellow over here the middle yellow and then the light yellow and same thing with all the paint the red it's just basically three colors it's white well actually four five colors and then I might do the red accents as well like with pink and then red and it's going to be really really neat this is the concept drawing and then this is the actual drawing so yeah all right hope everybody's having a good weekend i think this will be really cool i think it'll hang really well as far as position and you know i mean i like radical shaped guitars and as far as the back's concerned i might just do just like the back just like the bart simpson guitar just have you know have it the flipped image where it's just the back and then have like the full shoe the full shoe the dress the, no arms of course but just the shoulders and then the back of the neck with no face or anything like that just plain so it'll be fairly simplistic to do so yeah that'd be pretty cool and she doesn't have any like slingshots or anything like that so but the lisa simpson guitar is in the drawing phase yeah, and this is a really hot pickup. It's like 15. This is the, the Bart Simpson pickup that I'm using, but I'm going to order exact same one. So it's going to be very cool. And then Wilkinson actually makes a really cool bridge too, but probably going to use that bridge there. So, all right. So I hope everybody's having a good weekend. And we will see you soon. I'm going to do some work today on the other guitars, so I look forward to that. So, all right. And we will see you soon. Good morning. It is, it is October 17th. I forgot what day it is. Hold on a second. Yeah, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? October 16th, Sunday, 2022. And it's time to continue work on the Lisa Simpson guitar. As you recall from the past, we did the uh, cutout, and now it's time to cut out the cutout. So, and then we're going to cut the wood for it today and maybe do some of the tracings of all the stuff and maybe even start to work on that um got no neck got no parts got the bridge um i know what parts i'm going to use identical to the bart simpson guitar parts so i can use that um until i order i won't be able to order the parts for it until the beginning of next month so but i figured i'd cut the wood got the time got the wood figure i'd do it today so all right so let me get my scissors out and carefully cut the pattern out of the paper and we'll see a little bit all right, got the cutout, cut out, and move everything outside and get all the wood together and 
get all back on our right, single bit. All right, I got my three pieces cut out. We're going 16 inches by 27 inches. And we are good to go. And I picked the good side up on this, the good side bad on the bottom, and the middle piece is good. So, all right, so let me temporarily, well, let me figure out where this is going to go. Um, basically, and I think this wood is good as far as, so I don't think it really matters which way the wood orientates as far as the neck pocket, because I think once all three are glued together, so this is going to be fine. So, all right, so let me figure out some temporary screws away from everything else. I'll be there, there, and there, and we'll be right back. All right, I got the straight, the shape traced out, and it's time to get the scroll saw going, and very carefully cut this out. This one looks like it's going to be a lot easier, probably easier. I got a new blade on there uh, than the was cutting out the Bart one. <laughs> we'll see in a little bit. All right, the shape has been cut out successfully, and believe it or not, it actually fits really well um, sitting position, playing it. I think it's going to line right up your knees like fall like right between here and here so it's pretty cool so i'm thinking the input jack probably be like about there or so but then we'll see just the first step i just wanted to cut the wood today so we accomplished what we wanted to do so all right hope everybody's having a good day and uh we'll continue more with this as time progresses um the next day or two i might actually go ahead and do the the Dremel bits and everything like that prior to getting all the parts, but I, like I said, I've got to wait to order the parts until next month. So, all right, and we will see you soon. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna clean up my mess, Ooh, but that is pretty awesome. And it's not that heavy, but if I want, like I said, if I wanted to make it a little bit lighter on the middle layer, I can just cut a lot, you know, make it hollow with the middle layer. And then when I glue it, this whole section will be pretty hollow, so it won't weigh that much. So. It might contribute to the way it hangs and everything like that, but we'll see. It might. It's really not that heavy, but all right, and we'll see you later. <laughs> Very cool. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing on this fine December day? It is a somewhat overcast, cool day here in Central Florida. It is December 13th, 2022, and it's time to start work back up on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar. All right, got my tools spaced out. Got my good neck. All right, so first step today is going to be, as you recall, in a past video, I cut the wood blank for it and it's pretty cool uh, I dig that shape it's gonna be pretty awesome all right so what I'm gonna plan to do today is round the edges that'll be the first step so I'll get out the Dremel tool and then we'll round the edges and get everything smooth on the edges and then we'll see the next step all right we'll see when I get things going I'll right, we'll see you in a little bit okay got the proper Dremel bit and now we're going to put a nice uh, round edge on the front and the back and we'll see in a little bit all right so i show you how sharp it is and we'll see in a little bit all right got a nice smooth edge it feels awesome yeah nice rounded edge on both sides all right now next step is going to be i'm going to uh, get the uh, pencil uh, paper cut out again and then I'm going to draw out where everything is at as far as the, uh, the shape. And that way we'll see where we're go, And then we can uh, we'll see where everything's at. And then we'll get ready to cut out for the neck pocket. All right, we'll see in a sec. All right, got the, uh, the pattern traced out. Now I'm going to get a fresh X-Acto blade and then carve this into the wood. And I'll see you in a little bit. And then we're going to have to figure out the reverse image on the back. So... All right, let's see uh, another quick update. Uh, yeah, I've been doing some uh, dremeling, and I got the, the pattern, and <laughs> it looks pretty cool. Yeah, and any of these uh, imperfection little spots, I'll just put wood filler, and I'll sand it. Uh, you know, the uh, ugly phase during that section. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. 
All right, looks like it might start ringing in here, so I don't know how much more I'm gonna get done today, but yeah, it did pretty good. I didn't get to the back yet. I did draw out the back. Um, just kind of a brief, you know, like the back foot with the leg and then the foot and then her back and then of course the necklace and then the one ear that wasn't exposed on the front. So I think that looks pretty good as far as the dress and the uh, the foot and of course the dress is going to be red um, yellow on the flesh tones it's pretty cool and then white for the eyes uh, black since I'm not going to use the volume and the tone like I did on the Bart guitar uh, the Bart Simpson guitar um, this these are going to be black the eyes of course um, so alright just wanted to catch up see you in a little bit. Alright, doesn't look like it's gonna rain just yet. Just might though, but I might have time to go ahead and go ahead and see if I can cut out the neck pocket and maybe install the neck just uh, dry run. So, Alright, so let me get the neck out. Uh, bridge is gonna be roughly right there. It's gonna be actually pretty cool. I haven't really decided where I'm gonna put the volume knob. I could put it right there. That'd be kind of cool like in the knee area. Um, or up here somewhere in the dress, but I'll figure that out when I get to that. But yeah, all right, so let me get the neck out. And let's see if we have it's starting to get a little windy and it's definitely clouding up over there. So we'll see if we can uh, do any more. All right, see in a little bit. All right, I got the mark for the uh, where I'm going to cut out the neck pocket. So let me get the uh, scroll saw queued up and we'll cut it. Fingers crossed on this one. All right, let's see in a little bit. Okay, I got all three layers separated. I got the scroll saw queued up. I trimmed up the uh, the neck pocket, uh, the neck profile. Um, I've got the top two layers temporarily screwed together. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out the neck tendon. And <laughs> fingers crossed it's dead in the center. I try to get it as in center as possible. So fingers crossed on this one. We'll see a little bit. All right, cut the neck pocket out. Looks pretty good. I went ahead and cut the neck tendon, and this is just a rough fit. I mean, I just got it placed here. Um, running out of daylight, so we're gonna have to wrap it up for tonight, but uh, <laughs> just get a little preview of what we're looking at there. Uh, it looks pretty awesome. And there's plenty of access to everything, so this is this is a neat design. I really, I really dig this, and I just, you know, I, I say that about every guitar that I build, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, I ran out of the light, so I'm going to have to pack it up. But uh, I think I got the correct height as far as the tendon. And then I'll adjust that tomorrow. Of course, I just got that in there. Just, uh, you know, it's not held by anything. It's just kind of like in there. So, and I could always make the, the tendon a little bit lower. But I'll get the neck going, get a string test and everything like that and see how we are. But, all right. So, this will probably clued, conclude excuse me today's progress on the Lisa Simpson guitar build and as, as you can see I made a total mess <laughs> so all right so hope everybody's having a good night and we will see you soon all right take it easy we'll see you tomorrow good morning everybody it is December 14 2022 and believe it or not here in Central Florida it is on complete and other Oh, it's like heavy rainstorms, and there's going to be rain uh, forecasted for the whole day. So, <laughs> kind of puts a damper on things. Can't really work outside, so we can work in the garage. But I still want to get done some work on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar. And, you know, I was thinking about this guitar build, you know, through the night. I always do that when I start working on a project. I start thinking of ways to improve, ways to go about certain things. And, I, you know, I've been wanting to experiment a little bit with weight relief. Not that the Popeye guitar, I, I'll have to weigh that exactly in so many pounds. But normally my, my builds run from 7 to like 11, 12 pounds. The, uh, the Doctor guitar, that's a pretty heavy guitar. I think that was upwards of 12, 13 pounds for that guitar. Um, which I wish I would have done some weight relief on that one. Um, and since how I do the three layers of plywood... Um, and I still haven't, I cut the neck tendon yesterday, but I didn't actually glue it in. I was going to wait to do on that. Uh, today what I wanted to do was, you know, inside was just to, you know, put the neck on there and see if I got the right height 
and do a string test with the bridge and lock the neck in exactly where it's going to go as far as the lines and the positioning. But I was thinking on the second layer, I'm going to actually get a pencil and draw out along the edges. This is the second layer um, of the, the head part of the guitar and do like that and then cut out that piece on the second layer and just remove it all together and then when i go to glue the layers together they're still going to have that outer layer so it's not going to look any different but it's going to weigh i'm not sure how much that piece weighs and i did try to weigh this uh, body and it's only like seven pounds 6.6 .6 pounds, 7 pounds for the body itself, but you figure you add with the neck and the hardware. I mean, it, it feels a little girthy to me. It does feel, it's not light. It's not like light like a poplar strap body or anything like that. So, it's not heavy, but it's not super light. And I guess it really doesn't matter, per se, because it's a small print of a guitar. But I've always wanted to experiment, like I said, with the, uh, I'm not going to be able to do it on the Sonic because it's only two layers. Um, but since I got the three layers, I'm going to do that and then cut that piece out and then weigh that piece and then see the difference. And then I'll glue the second, the top piece to the middle piece. And that'll be today's progress too. And then glue in the neck tendon and then get some body filler and then fill in exactly where I want the neck to go. So that way when I place the neck, because right now when you place the neck, there's a little bit of a wobble because it's not set and it's not screwed in or anything like that or attached. So... All right, so let me work on that, and uh, we will see you when I get the next step. So separate the, the two little sections here, and then work that out. All right, we'll see you in a second. All right, got the three layers separated. And you know what? I was thinking it's really not going to probably make a whole lot of difference as far as weight relief, but I just want to experiment. Okay, so this is obviously the top layer, the middle layer, and the bottom layer. And, you know, as you know, my build, we work with plywood high grade polywood so it's really dense and I'm just going to go ahead and trace out on the middle layer and then go ahead and get it set up in and you know I want to kind of keep away from the neck joint to make me sure that the stability of that is still completely intact um, but then just cut out this and then when you I'll glue the top with the middle section together but let me go ahead and draw it out and we'll grab it all right i drew where i want to take out from and i included a little bit on the shoulder which that should be fine because the brit you know the neck it's going to be right there i may i may not but all right so and i was thinking <laughs> this would be a cool idea if i wanted to do like the if i had some plastic <coughs> excuse me and uh you know fill it the light you know some dense plastic for the eyes and then put some leds behind there and then actually light up the eyes that would look cool maybe not on this project but like on the uh i don't know if, if you follow my channel for a while you will recall the uh the ultraman guitar that concept that i was going to work that i'm working on and i want to build that guitar sooner or later that would be a cool idea for that because the middle layer you can have the eyes that actually light up that'd be pretty cool all right, so let me get things set up in the garage and we'll see you in a little bit. All right, made me a pilot hole. I'm in the garage. All right, so let me get the uh, scroll saw queued up and then we'll cut out this little section that we're seeing see. All right, successful cut out for the weight relief. Um, and this is the bits that I took out of there. And uh, yeah, it is pretty girthy. I mean, it is a little bit of girth to it. Um, definitely gonna take away from any kind of uh, heaviness in the top of the, the instrument so all right so let me figure this out and then i'm gonna glue this piece to the top piece and we're gonna glue them and set them so let me get my glue switch situate situated and i'll be right back all right i just sanded both sides the bottom side and the top side and i'm gonna lay a bead of glue and i got my activator fresh activator and we're gonna glue the top piece to the middle piece all right i'll see you in a sec all right got a layer on the middle layer a layer on the middle layer and we'll connect the two all right we'll see you after all right successful gluing of the the top to the middle piece <laughs> that's actually pretty cool actually too bad i didn't have any leds to well i've got leds but too bad the led light scenario that would be pretty cool but yeah and it does change the uh the balance and the weight believe it or not um 
you know, it's just those pieces there, but it does feel dramatically lighter, especially in the top part. I, you know, I didn't want it too light, of course, but uh, so that would be perfect. Yeah, so successful. Uh, it definitely did what I was hoping it was going to do. It's pretty cool. Actually, if I uh, <laughs> wanted to hide any kind of special message we could put a message in there that would never be seen until the guitar was destroyed <laughs> so anyway uh kind of a time capsule and I actually put like a little uh actually you know, on the back we can actually put like a little compartment that you can stick picks or whatever whatnot in the back that would be an idea but anyway so all right so let me figure out the we've got the uh the, the neck tendon that we cut yesterday and uh we'll get the neck out again and then to get the bridge and then see how we are as far as uh you know if the neck tendon is a good depth and see if it needs to be shortened or not shortened but uh needs to be made a little bit thinner and then we'll uh, do a string test and then we'll dial in exactly where the uh the neck is gonna go so all right so making progress even though it's raining outside it was like raining bad a little, a little while ago all right, I'll see you in a bit. All right, I did the string test, and we are almost perfect. That is just awesome. It's a little bit high up, you know, just a little bit off the frets, and we got plenty of room in the saddles to go down, and then we can always, you know, shim it if we have to and everything like that. So we should be good to go. I shouldn't foresee any problems. So I can go ahead and glue in the tendon to the top two layers. You know, they're one layer now, the top layer, glue in the uh, neck tendon. And then we should be good to go to dial in exactly. And I drew my lines, as you can see, for the bridge, the intonation line, and where it falls. And I did the string test, and it looks like it's right in the center. And it's going to be right there, so that's going to be perfect. And then the pickup is the single, the dual coil, single space pickup. And I think it's going to be right there, and it's going to be right before the line, so that's going to be awesome. So, yeah. All right, so let me go ahead and glue in the tendon, and I'll be right back. All right, got the tendon glued in, and it looks perfect. Between the top layer and the bottom layer, it's awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cure for a while. Then we're going to get out some Bondo, and then I'm going to dial the pocket in perfectly, where it's going to set exactly on the guitar itself. So I'm going to put the pocket, and I'm going to put some, I'll show you. And then we're going to line this with a little bit of body filler. That way, every time you put the neck in, it sits the exact spot. It has to be the lineup. So, And then the next step will be to actually attach the all both layers back together. And then drill out and connect the neck to the body. But All right, so we'll see you in a little bit. I'm going to take a little break, and we'll see you a little bit later. All right, got the neck pocket dialed in perfectly. Put a little uh, bondo in there, and then set the neck to my measurements exactly where the bridge should go i tried to go as in center of that piece as possible and i temporarily got the two layers screwed in and uh i think this probably concludes today's progress i just wanted to show you some of the uh the routing that i did the other day it's actually pretty cool yeah so it's getting a little bit later in the day than i like i got distracted and i started playing and you know me, I always play like four or five hours a day and it just kind of got, I was practicing uh, things at high speed and so I got a little distracted, but yeah, it's a rainy day anyway, so I figured tomorrow we'll get started probably early and uh, we'll install the neck and then probably install the bridge and then, you know, the process will draw up for the uh, single coil, the dual humbucker single coil, it, you know, it was like on the Bart Simpson guitar. It's actually that same exact pickup. It's a dual rail, but it's in the single coil space. It sounds really awesome. So I figured I'd do another one on the Lisa Simpson guitar. So, yeah. So we'll get that done, and we'll cut out that pocket, do all the wiring. I think I'm going to go with the input jack in the foot right here. Coming out of here, and I'll probably put the volume knob, like I mentioned before, either right here or in the knee. I think probably right in that spot would be perfect for you know for where the bridge is going to be to where it's not too close because on strats I tend to like on a strat regular strat um, 
you'll see I, I alter my strats. I always have the one knob, but the hand always tends to rub on the volume knob and turn the volume knob when I'm playing because I play aggressive music. So, all right. Hope everybody's having a good night. Um, Wednesday night. Like I said, tomorrow uh, we'll pick it back up again and get the next going on and everything like that. And I can't wait to start. I've got just received all the parts today for the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog guitar. So we'll be starting that one as well. So we'll probably work these two together. It's like I'll get to a certain point. And when I want to take a break, I'll just go over to the Sonic guitar. And then we can always work on the uh, the Ninja Warrior number no. 5 guitar, which is going to be a mirror finish or a... Uh, rhinestone finish so all right so like i said i hope everybody's having a good day sorry about the long-winded just going on but the weight relief was a success and i think i'll start doing that more because it does feel definitely lighter not that these guitars are heavy but being plywood it's more of a dense wood than it would be like a poplar or a you know mahogany or something like that so all right and hope everybody's having a good night and we'll see you tomorrow continue all right take it easy Good morning. How's everybody doing on this fine, beautiful, ah, clear day? It was raining, storming all night. It was bad. And we got a cold front. It's about in the 50s. Feels good. <laughs> got my jacket on. Oh, yeah. So, time to continue work on the Leeson Simpson guitar. I actually contemplated starting the Sonic the Hedgehog, but I figured I'm kind of into this one right now. So, all right. So, the plan is going to be to uh, cut this little part that was a little too much of an overhang on the neck install the neck install the bridge uh draw out for the uh pickup cut the pickup cavity maybe do the wiring um access panel plate figure out where we're gonna put the volume knob um all that good stuff and try to get as far as we can today it's early in the day it's still in the morning time so see what we can do got my parts got my scroll saw all right, so first thing I'm going to get the squirrels out and trim this a little bit, and then we'll get the neck on there and install the neck and get it going pretty good. And we'll see in a little bit. All right, got the neck pocket dialed in. I trimmed that little piece off there, and I'll probably round these edges more. But I got the neck out. I got my drill bit, the correct drill bit, and I got them marked for the correct depth. So we're going ahead and attach and install the neck to the body. All right, we'll see you when I get that done. See you in a sec. All right, touch the neck, and <laughs> it's looking pretty cool. I am really just digging the shape, and with the two feet, the way it sets just like that, that's just amazing. That's awesome. You know, you, you get lucky with this. It's just, uh, my advice is just to do it, <laughs> and you get lucky. And I'll get the neck pocket dialed in completely, and as you can see, you know, there's always a little bit of leftover material so i'll actually you know uh, cut this perfectly and make it perfectly round and make it look as perfect as possible yeah but i think that's going to work the uh i'll have to cut out the uh the parts on the body but yeah or you know the back but that's definitely cool and you can definitely feel uh because i did that weight relief in the head part so that's awesome yeah because it's uh in the way it feels so it's going to be pretty cool and it sits really good your knees go right between your knee here and your knee there i show you but these seats are like totally soaked <laughs> i don't feel like having a soaked rear end for the next few hours while i'm out here working so i'll show you that in a little bit when we actually do a string test so i'm going to get the you know, next step is going to be install the bridge so i'm going to get to make sure the lines are perfect and everything like that install the bridge and then get out the strings and do a string test and then we'll start with that step all right so let me see in a little bit yeah it looks uh it's pretty killer and there's full access and it's just that's just just get lucky that way i mean just the shape just random how random is this uh, lisa simpson so all right we'll see in a little bit all right got the neck perfectly positioned perfectly locked in at the exact perfect angle and I got the bridge set up to where it needs to go with my intonation lines and I pre-marked some holes so I've got my drill bit with a pre-depth in it so I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill for my bridge and install the bridge and we'll see inside all right got the bridge installed and I checked the strings uh, I did a string test I run the string uh, just regular cloth string 
from the two points and see how we are as far as center location and as far as up and down as far as intonation and we're right in the ballpark so we're good to go all right so the bridge is installed so the next step is to break out the pickup as you may recall I'm using the same pickup that i used on the bart simpson guitar and it's this series right here the wilkinson m series very hot very awesome for aggressive music like i like to play the heavy metal and it's pretty cool so here we go brand new pickup and i do have coil you know i do have a coil tap you know i'm gonna put coil tap function on here i forgot that i bought a couple um coil tap functions and there is a coil tap function on the bart simpson guitar and this is just gonna have one volume no tone so i decide you know what i could go with a tone hmm gonna be a you know I could go with a tone volume tone right there volume tone and then input jack right there you know, I have to think about that but let me uh, figure that out for a second where I'm gonna put the pickup and a brew back all right I'm back and you know what I have decided I'm gonna go with a tone and a volume and I've got my coil split pot which I have extra because I bought one for specifically for the Sonic the Hedgehog guitar <laughs> And then I'll just use my 500k ohm pot for the tone. So this is basically the setup I'm going to use. And this is the pickup. These pickups are awesome. So I'm going to draw out exactly where I want it to go. And it's pretty cool that it takes up a small spot. And I think this is going to, the knobs are going to be awesome right there. I'm going to center it on the knee and then try to center line right there. And I do believe, let's see, when you're playing, you're not going to really bump it with your finger. Hopefully that's going to be the uh, the uh, the catch. I'll have to see that. I'll have to spin the guitar around, make sure that it doesn't, your hand doesn't bump it when you're, you know, when you're palming the, the guitar. But yeah, that'd be cool. And then the input jack. So let me get the pencil out and then I'll drill through for the pedometers. Um, so, and then trace out where the bridge is going to go, or the uh, pickup. All right, we'll see you in a sec. All right, carefully marked out where the pickup's going to go. Very cool. It's going to be in the dress. Uh, the volume knob right there. The tone right there. Okay, so next step, I'm going to get the drill bit and drill all the way through three layers. And then we'll dismantle, and then we'll cut out for the neck pocket, or the uh, cut out for the pickup. And we'll see you in a sec. All right, drill that with the volume and the tone will go all the way through. All right, so I'm gonna take off the neck, dismantle, and we'll get ready to cut out for the uh, pickup. All right, see you in a little bit. Okay, I got the top layer and the bottom layer separated. Got everything detached, got taken off everything. So now I'm gonna put a pilot hole, I get the scroll set out, we're gonna cut out for the pickup. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, figured out for, uh, opened up, uh, got the opening cut for the pickup. It looks pretty good, awesome. All right, so now it's time to turn it over and start figuring out the wiring. Let me draw all that up, and we'll see in a sec. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, and we'll see in a bit. All right, real quick, I just did drilled a uh, ground wire for the bridge. So it goes right there and go right there. And so let me turn it over and figure out the wiring. All right, see in a sec. All right, working out where the uh, lines are going to go and where everything's going to go. I think I'm going to go with two separate pedometer cover instead of one longer one. That way I can color the cover plate red and then the skin tone. I think it would add to it a little bit, kind of camouflage it. And I've worked out the uh, push-pull pot right here, volume, the tone. Um, and because the, you know, the way the pickup is configured, the wire comes out of the center here. And then I'll add another channel just for the ground wire to go to the pedometer and then simply to the input jack. And we're going to go with a circular input jack and that's going to go right there in the foot. And I've adjusted for it on the back, excuse me, back cover plate. All right, so let me get the Dremel tool out and we'll start routing for the wiring. And then we might even be able to glue both sections together and go to the glue phase and then we might even be able to get further past that and start working on some body filler and get some of the body work done but anyway so it's pretty simple wiring so it shouldn't be that bad so get the dremel going clean up my mess a little bit and we'll be right back all right got the wiring dremeled out and it's looking pretty cool for the input jack 
the uh, toe knob and you know I got the proper height so I stick out just the proper way I just got the nut and you know I put the nuts back on there so so we're good to go as far as that goes so we are set and then on the uh, the back piece did the courtesy cuts and that open for the pedometers the access panels and like I said before I'm gonna I like to go with two instead of one I guess I could still go with just one piece but it's between two different colors of paint so I'm not sure so and then there's plenty of room to mount the different things of course you know and then you know it'll be inside so you got plenty of room to work with but I might want to open that one up just a hair more just so it's a little bit easier <laughs> to access. And then uh, let me get everything cleaned up and we are about ready for the glue phase. We'll glue the top piece to the bottom piece and have one solid body. So that'd be pretty cool. So we got a lot done so far. It's about noon, so we're, we're chucking right along. And then what I still got left to do is I'm going to create some, uh, you know, custom fabricate some access panel plates uh, for the two openings. And yeah, I'll do two separate ones, so too bad, and then I'll paint them so they'll blend in. And that's pretty much it. Then uh, we'll glue it together, and then we can start working on the finish and the body. And this time around, I think before I do anything else, I'm going to uh, install the bridge, how it would be, or the... Uh, the pickup how it would be in the guitar that way there's no guesswork so any nibs of wood that i might have to add or if i'm going to drew drill straightly to the back piece and everything like that get that squared away now that way there's no question like on the Popeye guitar i had to kind of figure that out on the fly but i like to have all that done same thing with the uh the screws for the input jack make sure those are all pre-drill and make sure there's no cracks that form after the fact so all right, so let me get everything going, and it's looking pretty good, and we'll see. All right, check out everything. Everything looks good. I checked everything again and again, make sure that all the routes are complete, because once we glue it up, it never can be accessed again. All right, so we are ready for the glue phase. All right, so let me uh, put a good bead on all this part, and then I'll flip the back, and then we'll tip it over, and I got my accelerator, and we'll get it all glued in, and we'll see you after that. See you after that step. All right, see you in a bit. All right, successful glue phase. We are one solid piece, and it is looking awesome. And I always make sure I blow in the different cavity openings, make sure no glue accidentally seeps into those spots. But yep, we are one solid piece looks pretty awesome all right next step is going to be to dial in um, the pickup um, you can actually you know wire the you know wire put the pickup wire through and actually figure out um, how far it needs to come up and mount the springs and all that good stuff I'm gonna install the springs in the or the screws in the input jack the counter sink um, what else and then on the back, we're going to figure out the access panel plates. Going to create probably two circles, smaller circles, and then maybe ovals. Well, circle and an oval. And then do all the etching for all that um, with the router. And then we could probably start, uh, and then dial in the neck pocket. I had to shim it a little bit. So we'll put some body filler in there and fill it so it makes perfect contact with the body. But yeah, we'll get to start going on that stuff, and uh, we're good to go. Um, it looks pretty awesome. It's a very sunny day, as you can tell. It feels pretty good out here. It's in the 50s, or maybe the low 60s, so it's just perfect weather for this. So, All right, let me start working on that, and we'll be right back. All right, perfect. Installed the screws, and we got the input jack installed. It's looking pretty awesome. That way, there's no minor cracks when we go to assemble it after the paint has been finished learning lesson to me <laughs> so all right so now i'm gonna work on the pickup and get you know see if i need to you know have any like little wood pieces or if i can screw directly into the back because we can do it now because there's no paint on it and if it goes through we could always adjust and fix so this is the perfect time to do it learning lesson to me number two so let's go ahead and knock this out and i'll be right back
All right, perfect. Got the pickup installed and it is looking awesome. Yeah, I'm glad I did this first before the paint and everything like that because now all I got to do when we go to assembly is just screw it in. All right, and I made sure it didn't go deep. Got the screws perfect and I gave myself plenty of room to go up and down and adjust it for the proper height of the pickup. So I think that's going to look awesome. So, all right, so you can probably adjust the screw position just a little bit over like that. But yeah, that's perfect. All right, so next step is going to be to, hmm, let me figure out what the next step is. I'll be right back. All right, time to make the back access cover plates. I've decided on two small spherical, and I just used this uh, measuring cup, and I put two spheres together, and then I connected the lines. And I'll probably make two of the same exact same size, and then use them as such. So they'll look pretty cool. They'll look uniform. All right, so let me cut them out, and then I got the scroll saw, and I got some white pickguard material, some uh, scrap, and I'm going to cut a couple out there, and then we're going to countersink, and we're going to get them looking good. All right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, got my two shapes cut out on my scrap material, and I'm going to get the scroll saw going, and we're going to cut these out, and we'll see when I get that done. All right, got my two circles cut out of my uh, pickguard material. Now I'm going to place them where I want them on the body and to cover it and i'm gonna have a screw on either end same thing with the top one screw on either end and then i'll take my pencil and then i'll draw and then i'll get my exacto blade out and then i'll score where i want them and then i'll get my dremel back out and then i'll countersink and then i'll install some screw holes and then uh, countersink the screw holes and then install them in the body but i might show you the step of the process but that's basically what i'm going to do so i'll get that going and i'll be right back all right got both access panel plates installed and countersunk and they're looking awesome all right so the next step is to dremel out the bits here that like i did on the front and then uh, we can go ahead and after we finish that step the bugs are out today ah uh, after we uh, set that up, we can uh, start applying the uh, Bondo on the sides and start working on the finish. Actually, pretty cool. All right, so these bugs are getting me. All right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, quick update. Ugly face part one is in full effect. <laughs> yeah. All right, this will conclude progress today on the Lisa Simpsons electric guitar. Got a lot done. Pretty cool. Um, it's looking uh, looking as it should right now. Ugly. <laughs> Did sand quite a bit on the front, but I'm just like tired. And I sand down the side there. But yeah, I can pick it up tomorrow. But uh, we are definitely making some really good progress. And uh, all right, so hope everybody has a good evening, and we will see you tomorrow. Yeah, we'll continue, and then we've got other stuff to do. But yeah. It's looking pretty killer. Really digging it with some color. It's really going to come to life. I can't wait. All right. So, and we will see you soon. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing on this fine sunny day? It is sunny and beautiful in Central Florida. It's in the 40s. It feels awesome. It's time to continue work on Lisa Simpson electric guitar build. As you recall from yesterday, we did a lot of body filler. This morning I added a few more touch-ups here and there. Um, we're going to sand this and uh, get it looking good, all the body filler. And uh, we'll get it up to do a sound test. Yeah, that's what we got planned. Do a sound test, string it up, uh, install the string trees on the neck, uh, the, the tuning keys, uh, put some strings on there and see how we did. And that'll be awesome. And then if that's successful, we'll, we'll let that set for a while. And then Ugly Phase Part 2. All right. So we'll see you when I get a little sand then done. All right. See you in a little bit. All right. Quick update. Um, whew. Spent the last couple hours. The Ugly Phase Part 1 has been completed. <laughs> and it is looking amazing. Oh, wow. Took a long time. A lot of work. But it's so worth it yeah and it's just amazing yeah, i love this part of the process i just wanted to show you phone's acting a little funny it's got me a little concerned but you know 
nothing, you know, all ones do tend to <laughs> wear out after a while. So, all right, so the next step is to do a full on string test. So, but I just wanted to give you, show you how good it turned out. Yeah, that was just so cool. Yeah, I can't wait to see this uh, with paint, guitar, with paint on it. Oh, it's going to be amazing. All right, so I'll reattach the neck, reattach the bridge, um, get the tuning keys. We'll actually put the tuning keys on the neck, install them first, and, the, you know, do the string trees after the fact. But, yeah, the tuning keys probably be first. All right, let me get the neck out, and we'll get the tuning keys, and we'll be right back. All right, got my tuning keys, got my tools, got my drill bit, and we are ready to go. Let me install the tuning keys, and we'll be right back. All right, got the tuning keys installed. Looks pretty awesome. Pretty standard, straightforward. All right, so now let me install the bridge on the body, and we'll be right back. All right, successful install the bridge. So let me install the neck to the body, and we'll be right back. All right, got the neck attached, and it looks amazing. Got three sets of my cheapy cheapy strings. So hopefully there'll be a good batch within those 18 strings. So all right, let's put some uh let me put my two E strings on first and we'll be right back. Alright, got my two E strings on and we are right in the middle. We are perfect. And I think we're good intonation wise too, or you know, uh, action wise. So let me put the rest of the strings on there and we'll be right back. All right, installed all the strings for the first time. Looks pretty killer. All right, next step is going to be to install the string trees. And then we'll get a good intonation and up to pitch. So it looks pretty killer. Yeah, I'm really digging that shape. And it kind of stands on its own, like right there. It's kind of... <laughs> that wasn't actually planned in any kind of way. So it... And the guitar, like, stands it stands you could just lean it up against something you wouldn't even need a stand i mean it's it stands on its own it's really kind of funny that way i completely unplanned but yeah that's uh that's pretty that's pretty amazing that it does that and stands by itself on its own two feet this guitar stands on its own two feet but anyway i digress let me uh install the string trees and i'll be right back all right perfectly install the string trees that's getting easier that step all right so let me get it up to pitch and let's see what we got see if uh all my measurements are good and we'll see in a minute fingers crossed all right successful training test it is sounding good i didn't have a chance to intonate it i'll do all that later uh but i want to put some strap buttons but i want to show you how it sounds right now before and i show you I want to show you where it sets in the lap as far as how it sets so let me turn the camera on i'll be right back all right let's see if i can get this in the frame it's always kind of a <laughs> and it sits like right in your lap right there let's see if i can get the camera a little bit closer one second okay. extreme close up of me <laughs> no we don't want that all right Let's see. Eh. Eh, the body's in the frame, but of course, brand new strings, crappy strings, so the worst strings you can possibly get. Trying to get better in the frame. Let's see. Ah, you got so much. Hey, lady. All right. <laughs> Let's see if I... That's a little bit better. <laughs> Just a quick uh, sound demonstration.
<laughs> Just did a real quick uh, tuning. Another fast fret and fast neck. And you can reach all the frets easily. I'm glad I did that weight relief. Um, not that it, like I keep saying, not that it was really heavy to begin with, but it does feel, and the way I'm sitting, it's very much in my neck there, but I think when you stand and you sit correctly with correct posture, it's not going to be that way, but. And these are real fine strings. These strings are like eights, and like I normally say, I usually use about ten, so. Sounds good. It's really solid too. Now I like the way your hand rests right there. It feels so comfortable having your. All right, let me uh, figure out the strap placement. That's going to be uh, kind of interesting. All right, and I'll give you a better sound demonstration when I take it in the house and everything like that, and it's had time to settle. And I can tune it properly because I really couldn't see the tuner and of course the battery on the tuner is dead. So. Still holding pretty tune. Alright, so let me uh, be right back. Alright, back. Alright, now as far as strap buttons, hmm, this is kind of a toughie. Um, course I'm gonna try to put one all like always right in the center of the neck plate um, but you always try to go a little bit either directly in line but seeing how it's such an oblong shape I might elect to go with the strap button here but I think it would be perfect like right there so let me try it right there and the good thing about doing this always before any paint is you can Definitely figure out where your strap buttons are going to go. All right, so let me get that going, and I'll be right back. All right, got the strap buttons installed on the first guess. This is the first guess, and it's a little bit below the, the center line of the instrument, so we'll see. I'm going to get the strap, and we'll see how it goes. What do you think? Think it's going to neck dive, or you think it's going to be perfect? I don't know. I'm kind of iffy on this one. All right, we'll see you in a sec. All right, what do you think? Do you think I got the uh, strap buttons right on the first try? Well, what do you think? <laughs> see if I can set the camera in a way that I can do the full, yeah. And there we go. Of course, the strings are stretched. We need some fret work. Got to... I'm kind of happy with that. I mean, it doesn't really neck dive at all. Um, you can adjust how you position it on your body. And this does, you know, get close to your face at times, I guess you can say. Uh, it's a novelty guitar. I mean, you play it for one or two songs on stage. It wouldn't be like an all-night kind of thing. But it's still not too bad. I mean, it's not like, you know, you got to kind of get your head all the way down. But, uh... I think that's cool. That'll work. I think the straps are good where they're at. Um, really, there's really no other choice. I mean, I could put a strap behind here, like one of the buttons, and it would hang lower. But I think it's fine right where it is. Um, but, alright, so we're going to let this uh, set for a little while. And go inside and get a full intonation and tune and everything like that, and then I'll show you. So. And then I'll probably let it sit overnight. Or if I'm at wood later, we can start the ugly phase part two where we just start doing the wood grain filler. But I always like to have it kind of, yeah, strings are way <laughs> stretched. But I like to have it like for a day before I start the body work because the body work, you know, that's going to take a couple weeks to complete. So 
So it's a new toy. <laughs> anyway. All right, so we'll see you in the house in a little while. Let me clean up my mess and then let it stretch. But yeah, there's more or less where it's at. I mean, I guess it could shift a little bit here and there, but I think it'll be fine. All right. Lisa Simpson guitar build. <laughs> I dig that shape and just, just feels so natural. It feels so good to have your hand resting right there. Anyway, okay, let's see in a little bit. All right, we're inside. I just wanted to show it to you one more time. Um, I'm gonna let this settle for, a, you know, set for a while and take a break. Uh, been at it all day. It's like midday, but uh, yeah. In a little while, I'll go in the other room and I'll do a full on sound test like I always do. But yeah, I think it turned out really cool. And I like the fact that the, uh, the guitar stands on its own two feet i mean how many times can you say that about a guitar that stands on its own two feet <laughs> that's gonna be funny uh there's, there's her brother right there good old bart and yeah, lisa will be joining you soon so can't wait to get some paint on it so but yeah it turned out really cool not to get an exact weight on it. I'm guessing probably about seven pounds or so. So it's fairly light. All right. Hope everybody's having a good day. It's the weekend. Friday uh, bodybuilding show this weekend. Mr. Olympia. That's always a good thing. Yeah, I used to be a bodybuilder back in the day. So I still follow the sport. But yeah, if anybody's watching Mr. Olympia, I think Big Rami's going to take it again. I think Brandon Curry's probably going to be second. Maybe... I don't know who's going to be third or fourth, but uh, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, <laughs> hope everybody's having a good day, and we will talk to you a little bit later. All right, see you soon. How are you doing? All right, well, I got it intonated and set up, and it sounds good, and it plays well. But unfortunately, there's definitely some fret work needs to be done, and uh, let me see if I can turn the camera around and give it just a little bit better of a sound check. One sec. All right, how's everybody doing? Just want to update you a little bit. Okay, um, definitely needs to be fret work done to it. So I mean, and I, it, you know, there's a lot of bad frets. So I'm gonna have to level crown and polish the frets, and that's gonna straighten everything out. But everything is intonated. Everything is good to go. Everything's centered. Really good action. Okay, so next step is gonna be to dismantle everything, and start ugly phase part two, which is gonna be the wood grain filler and. We can do that. It's getting ready to get dark. It's it's four o'clock and it's already starting to it's you know sun's starting to set. So this shouldn't be a problem at all. And I'll probably start on the back as usual. So let me dismantle and we will be right back. See you in a little bit. All right, it is that time. It is time for the ugly phase part two. And so I've got all my tools. I've got my different variety of brushes. I've got my favorite fan brush. Um, if you've seen my videos, you've seen I love this brush when it comes to this step. Uh, I've got my plastic wood. I've got uh, a little bit mixed up from the last guitar. I think that was the Popeye guitar, a little bit left over. So we're going to start applying light layers. And uh, it's going to start looking uniform color. And it's going to start looking amazing. Normally I start on the back. And I'll probably do the same. Probably start on the back. Well, the back and the sides. So... And then I'm going to make sure all the lines are nice and edged real good. So, all right, let's see a little bit when I can get a couple layers on there. We'll see in a little bit. All right, two layers of wood grain filler on the guitar body. And I really love this step, like I've stated so many times in past builds, because it becomes a uniform color. It's an ugly phase, so it's going to be ugly until I sand it and make it smooth and perfect. But, yeah, it's just kind of a... I love it because it does, you know, the whole point of this step is to make the, you know, the body completely level, flat, and smooth, and perfect, so, yeah. Okay, I probably got about a couple more coats on the top and then the sides, and then we'll go some on the bottom. But yeah, it's looking good. Well, it's, you know, it's ugly face part too, so it's very textured and grainy, but... 
just get sanded, you know, <laughs> it just makes it perfect. All right, hope everybody's having a good night. It's about 6.30 at night, so I've been at it all day. But, uh, yeah, I just love that. That's cool. All right, we'll see you when I get more done. I'll do another progress report update. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. everybody it is about sunrise on December 18th 2022 and I want to give you a quick progress report on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar build the uh, as you recall we did all the work up to this point and we are working on the ugly phase part two which is the wood grain filler and it's an ugly phase because it's definitely ugly so I've had to let this cure for like the last day or so um, all the layers are complete I usually put around five, six layers of the wood grain filler on the body. I wanted to show you complete guitar is covered and it's definitely coarse and ugly, but when I sand it and make it perfect, it's going to be just flawless. I just wanted to show you how it looks, the ugly phase. <laughs> and I'm probably going to let it cure for a little bit longer and actually going to start work on the Sonic the Hedgehog guitar this morning. Like setting the neck and other stuff with wool. I'll post another video about that. But I just wanted to show you that I'm letting it fully cure. It, this stuff cures fairly quickly. But I want to give it a little extra time that way. Make it nice and hard. Because this wood filler does get pretty hard. I mean it's definitely, yeah. Looks pretty good. So hope everybody's having a good day. It's uh, end of the weekend. Sunday. So yeah. I can't wait to get this thing sanded and get some primer coats and we'll probably go I was able to find some uh, I've got a can of my favorite automotive primer this isn't the 201 but this is the dark gray and I like to use well actually I do have the good gray stuff yeah I did buy two cans I forgot yeah this is my favorite primer as you recall on past builds I've used this stuff many times this is the best and I, I think I'm gonna like to do the darker primer Got a full can. This stuff right here, Rust Oleum. On this body, because uh I like when it gets into the grooves of the indentations of the Dremel parts. And that way when you spray the color, like a you know, it's gonna have the full yellow color. I thought about doing like the, the tint of the color, like having the lighter yellow, then the darker yellow, and then progressively darker, but I think it looked better with just a solid color. And then of course red for the dress. And then white and then black for the eyeball bits. And I'm thinking about coloring the headstock. Like on the Popeye guitar, I did the black one. It's got the exact same neck. I'm thinking about matching the dress color and doing the dress on the front of the headstock with my logo in white. Which should be really killer. So, there we go. Like I said, Ugly Phase Part 2 is in full effect. Hope everybody has a good day. And uh, we will see you shortly. I'm going to, like I said, start working on the Sonic guitar. So, I don't have to scare it for another day, but I can't wait to get this going. Plus, it's super cold, and I don't like to do, like, body work. It's almost, like, in the low 30s, so it's near freezing. And I don't like to do body work because I don't want to cause any kind of issues with it later on down the line. If it shrinks too much and, you know, whatever, whatnot. But we can definitely do the wood cutouts and everything on other guitars. So, all right, and we will see you soon. Have a good day. Good afternoon, everybody. It is December 21st, 2022, and it's time to continue work on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar build. As you recall, we're letting, we let the uh, multiple layers of wood grain filler harden and seal and cure for the last few days, and now it is time to sand and make beautiful. I'll start on the back and sides, and then work my way around to the front. Just wanted to show you how it looks prior to ugly. Very textured, very <laughs> not smooth. All right, got my sanding tools ready. And we're going to make this beautiful. All right, we'll see when I get some work done. All right, see you in a little bit. All right, spent the last couple hours sanding. The Ugly Face Part 2 is complete. <laughs> I just wanted to show you what uh, looks like right now. I got some primer in my belly. Getting some, uh, some body warmth <laughs> warming up the can. Uh, I'm going to put this on a hanger and uh, get some primer coats on there to seal in all this uh, wood filler. 
Just wanted to show you how it looks right now. It looks pretty killer. Oh yeah, took a lot of time. Get it perfect. I'll take a ton of pictures too, so. Yeah, I just want to show you how it looks prior to the primer coats. Yeah, transformation. I love that, especially when you put the primer on there and it, it all becomes the uniform primer gray and it's just awesome. So, all right, it is a cold one today. It's like 50, but I think it's going to be all right for the primer coats. And I like the fact that it's a little bit cooler. That way it won't smell as much. I'm going to hang this one in the garage probably. That way it don't uh, disturb anybody in the house because I might hang it in the second room there. But all right, so let me put it on the hanger and get some primer coats on this uh, Lisa Simpson guitar build and we'll get it going good. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, we're on the hanger, we're blown off, and we're ready for some primer coats. All right, fingers crossed. Hopefully this goes well. I don't anticipate any problems. Uh, maybe it's getting a little too chilly. So we're going with rust oleum gray primer. All right. Uh, looking good. All right, we'll see you in a little bit, fingers crossed. All right, just finished about three layers of primer coats and it's looking good. It's a flat primer, so it's cold and it's still kind of wet. You can see where it's shiny, it's wet. But yeah, it's turning out really well. It's taking the primer really good. And as you can see, when it dries, it will be completely flat. But yeah, it's, uh, it's turning out good. I'm putting a little extra layer in certain spots to kind of fill in any of the lines that might be visible so all right so we're gonna let this cure for a little while and then we'll put some more coats on there and then we'll catch up with you in a bit all right see you in a little bit all right another quick update on the lisa simpson's electric guitar build just wanted to show you how awesome it turned out and it's still drying of course so we're gonna let this dry for a few days and then we'll start with the colored base coats of yellow the skin tone I just wanted to show you how well it turned out. All that sanding, smooth. Yeah, it looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, primer's still drying a little bit. Got the fan on. You can get the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog guitar next up in line for this process. So I just wanted to show it to you. Looks pretty killer. Yep, turned out amazing <laughs> yeah, I thought to myself I'm getting pretty good at this but it's just practice makes perfect I mean the more you do it the more you learn and then I'll sand this uh, primer when it gets nice and cured so I'll add an extra layer of refinement but it's already fairly it's fairly smooth and I want the eyes a little bit textured that way gives it like a cool effect but yeah all right this will conclude work on the Lisa Simpson guitar for today. Hope everybody's having a great day. And we will see you soon. Alright, take it easy. Pretty cool. Alright, we're outside sanding on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar build. Some more progress. Yeah, I had to take it outside. It was getting pretty... Uh, I might need a second round of wood grain filler. Um, and some... Uh, another round of primer on this one for some reason it really dried up pretty good on the primer and it left these uh oh, you can see these little superficial cracks in the wood which isn't that a big deal i could fill that but sometimes it happens like that and i always try that's why i do this phase uh the primer filler phase and i did use the rust-oleum darker primer instead of the Krylon. And that probably caused these superficial dryings of the finish but it's fine as you can see i sanded down this part really good and it took down the cracks and i might go ahead and fill it in a little bit on these spots with the wood grain filler and then put some more primer do another round of primer put the krylon too and one of the good stuff so but i'll have to let this dry for a day because if you 
sand it and then put the cry line up it'll react and it'll just be a mess so yeah so let me get some sanding done and we'll see you in a bit all right quick update sanded all the primer been at it for about an hour or so i think i got it looking pretty good i was able to sand out all this superficial see if i can get some better light some super the superficial uh cracks that were forming with the the dryness of the primer and i think i pretty much took care of them one second let me just my hand here um so i think we're good to go for some base coats of paint of course i'm gonna let this cure for a day or two because i've noticed that even when you sand on the primer and you think it's dry it still reacts with the base coat so all right so just a quick update on the lisa simpson guitar build um the primer has been sanded and it looks pretty good so, So next step will be the yellow uh, flesh tones and I'll try to hit all the areas that need it and not try to overspray per se. I'm going to paint everything else but yeah. Alright, looks pretty good. And we'll see how this fares in a couple days and if I need to fill in some wood filler, green filler I will. But as you can see, all those superficial cracks have pretty much vanished. Sanded it down enough. I think it was just the drying of the primer that caused them. So, all right, and we will see some. All right, good afternoon, everybody. It's the 29th of December. It's time to continue working on the Lisa Simpson guitar build. As you recall, a few days ago, we had uh, sanded all the primer and we got it looking pretty good. Uh, I wanted to put some yellow paint on today and I thought I had a whole can of yellow but it turns out man I just got a little bit this is probably like I don't know a quarter of a can and I don't think it's gonna be enough but we can go ahead and put some on there just to kind of give it a little bit of a look to it and use up this can and then we can go pick up some more but this is just gonna push this back a couple days because well I can just concentrate I guess on you know, just concentrate on the leg bits and then I could well I tell you what we'll put a go ahead and put a coat probably one to probably one to go several coats of the yellow anyway so we'll go ahead and do the yellow bit so we're gonna do yellow bits where it needs to go just wanted to show you how it looks before the paint so we'll see you in a little bit all right, another quick update on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar build. Yeah, this can of paint I had was old and it was sputtering and doing all kinds of bad things. So I made the best of things. Um, actually sprayed the leg bits, which turned out okay. Uh, good thing about this paint is, is once it dries, you can sand it. So, yeah. So, and then I sputtered a bunch on the top. So looks a little bumpy in certain spots but I'm gonna sand it and get a proper can or two I just need one can I think and so this will be a good base for the yellow but I just wanted to show you Lisa has a little bit of flesh tone color if only for you know and I'll let this dry for a full week because it's you really can't see it but it's eh, not blotchy per se but certain parts of the wood were sucking up the paint quicker than other parts so but that's kind of cool it kind of gives a little bit of texture and then when I do the 2k clear coat it'll level a lot of it out but this is a really good really good step so wasn't the best ideal situation like I said this can's nozzle for some reason was spitting and it was dripping while I was spraying but I used to you know did the best I could with it so like I said did the the legs the front and the back and then you know the arms in the front and the neck and the and then the head a little bit on the back but not enough to really matter and i'm covering it anyway so i'm gonna have to sand it so yeah just wanted to show you lisa simpson's starting to come to life i'll let this set for like i said for a week or so and then we'll get some more color on her so all right hope everybody's having a good day we got plenty to do well plenty to do work on the uh leveling crowning and polishing of the frets of all the instruments that I'm gonna do the, the three that are on the table right now so that'll take a while and then still working on the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog which acts is just turning pretty cool that paint and then the gizmo guitar so all right hope everybody's having a good day and we'll see you soon
Hey, how's everybody doing? It is January 3rd, 2023, and it's time to continue work again on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar. And I've come across somewhat of a failure, kind of a setback, but it's fixable. But the color on old Lisa is going to be short-lived. Uh, for some reason, that primer that I used really kind of soaked into the wood and left a bunch of superficial cracks and left a couple lots of pores. I've been sanding on it for a while and there's still openings in a lot you know I was able to get a lot of this flat it took a lot of work um, but there's still let's see if I can get the angle of the camera just right there's still fissures that are gonna need to be filled because I can't sand them flat because they're deeper than just the surface paint and on the back as well I sanded really good and I can see that the the primer that primer that I used see like right here it really kind of did a number on the finish or the, uh, the the superficial top layers of the wood there so unfortunately what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to start over with the ugly phase part one I decided the best uh, course of action is gonna be to let's basically start the finish process again which is fine. I mean, it's not going to add too much thickness to the body or anything. It's still going to be cool. Might even actually enhance it somewhat. Just going to have to mix me up a fresh batch of wood filler and then start applying layers again and then letting that dry and then sanding that smooth and then going to try to find my Krylon 2-in-1 primer that I love and not use this Rust-Oleum stuff that did this to the, you know, it didn't have this effect on other guitars, but for some reason this this uh, batch was, I don't know, maybe it was more a little bit more acetone, maybe the wood was a little drier than normal, but it just kind of, it really kind of butchered it up. And so, unfortunately, I'm going to have to start over with that, and that's going to be fine. I mean, you're just going to, you know, I'm not going to put a super thick layer. It's not going to be a complete layer. But it's going to be enough to fill in all these imperfections because if i were to sit there and try to sand them all flat it would be forever and then it when i put the base color on there the same thing would probably happen and pop up again so all right let me mix me up a fresh batch take it off the hanger and then we're going to start again with the ugly face part two second round so this sometimes happens i mean when you're making custom guitars i mean it just kind of happens that way but no big deal we'll be able to fix it we'll get it we'll get it going all right so let me get some uh, layers on there and we'll see in a bit all right after looking at the sides very thoroughly i've determined that the sides really weren't affected by the drying of the, the primer paint probably because there's a lot of body filler there so uh yeah i just decided to do the front and the backs again minus little sections like the pearl section didn't really need it because there was really no cracking so put some several layers and then we'll sand this again, and then we'll go with some more primer coats. I'll have to go out and try to find some more of uh, the 2-in-1 Krylon primer. But all right, so this probably concludes today's progress on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar build. Unfortunately, you know, but you know, it's like with the guitars when you build them, you always come across. Like this is the first time I've had to do this, but I think it's going to be perfect. And it's going to actually make the finish exactly perfect. So, all right, we'll see you in a little bit. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing on this beautiful, clear, sunny, central Florida day? It's about 65 degrees. It feels amazing. Time to continue work on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar build. As you recall, the other day I had some issues with the Rust-Oleum primer paint. And I've coated the front and the back with some of the, uh, the wood grain filler, the Ugly Phase Part 2, just to redo it. All right, let me get sanding on here. Went out to Dafiniac Springs actually and got some two in one. My favorite. I've heard that this is being discontinued at Walmart, so that kind of sucks. I really like this. this is my favorite, as you recall. I have to find some source online, but all right, so let me do some sanding. I think it's actually going to turn out better in the eye region, and let's hopefully, you know, get rid of all those uh, cracks, superficial cracks, and seams. and little you know voids here and there and make it as perfect as possible all right let me get some sanding done we'll see you in a bit all right got an update been sanding on it for quite a while and i got it back down flat smooth and beautiful and i think we're ready for some two-in-one primer coats uh ugly face part two has been completed 
uh, re-completed. <laughs> As you can see, all those lines and divots and wood fractures and little, you know, whatnots is gone. And now I've got my good primer. And I'm going to go ahead and put some coats on there and see what happens. Hopefully I don't get any reaction with the yellow paint from before. I'm hoping I won't, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to start with some light coats and see if it reacts anyway. If it does, then I'll just let it sit for a day or two. And then I'll go back to it. But I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the hanger. And we'll try this again and see if we have better results than the first time. I think we will, because... As you can see, all the superficial cracks in the wood are, are vanished. They're gone. I sanded them and added the wood filler. So, all right, fingers crossed on this one. We're going to, like I said, put it on the hanger and then uh, get some uh, my favorite two-in-one Krylon primer on there. I'm going to have to find a good source for that because that is the best so far. I've got this other stuff that I got from uh, Ace or from uh, O'Reilly's. I'll have to show you that. And we're going to experiment with that. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's a different kind of, different brand I've never heard of before. So I'll show you that. All right, let me get on the hanger and get some paint on here, and we'll see in a little bit. All right, primer step number two complete, and we have been vindicated. Ah, the errors of the Rust-Oleum primer paint have been erased. So, yeah, only one little thing went kind of... Had a little bit of reaction with the yellow paint just on the ear. But once that dries, I'll sand that perfectly flat and it'll be golden. But yeah, let me uh, take it out into the light so you can see. But yeah, we fixed all the errors at the rust oleum. And see that where it reacted by the ear? Well, that's all right. She just had a little allergic reaction. But I can sand that flat. I put it some extra layers of paint. You can see it's still wet there. But yeah, once that dries, I can sand that flat before the base colors. But yeah, just wanted to show you how good it turned out. All the cracking of the superficial wood is gone. And it looks good. So, all right, we'll let this set for a few days. And then I'll sand that and we'll continue on it. But yeah, it looks pretty killer. Yeah, sometimes you have to repeat processes to get it right but yeah that's the only thing but that's no worries like I said okay all right we'll see you in a little bit good morning how's everybody doing on this bright sunny central Florida day it is chilly it's in the 40s it feels good you can see the breath um, <clears throat> it's time to continue work on the Lisa Simpson guitar second time around we're going to put some flesh tone yellow base colors on the guitar. And it's looking pretty good right now. Got it back to square one. Got a fresh can of the Rust-Oleum uh, Sunburst Yellow. So, all right, fingers crossed. We'll put some color on here and hopefully have a better result than the last time around. All right, I'll see you in a minute. All right. Uh, whew. You ready for the reveal? I am pleased to say... Oh man, I tell you what, uh, it's kind of nerve wracking, but the base coats of yellow have been applied and it went very successfully. Wow, yeah, that, that went very well. There was a spot or two in the back that I fixed, but yeah, it, that's just amazing. Uh, hopefully I'll let it dry, hopefully no bugs, no leaves, no nothing kind of hit this, but this Wow, it just turned out so perfectly. Let me go in the back without getting anywhere near it. All right. Here, look at that. Wow. So much better. Yeah, a little bit of layered, a little bit of drippy, drippy on the just, but it, it drips in a good way, you know what I mean? It gives it contour and, sh you know, just where the pearls are and the flesh tones. Just a little bit of, you know, the little accumulation of paint there, but I think it's going to be perfect when it dries. It's going to be less, but yeah, it turned out really well. I know it's dark, but all right. So let me uh, catch my breath and let this hang for a little bit, and then we'll take it in the house and let it dry for a few days, and then we'll start working on the red. The dress and the shoes and the pearls and the, the eyes and the, 
and everything like that and we'll get it going all right let's see in a bit good afternoon everybody january 8 2023 and it is time yet again for some fret work this time it's on the lisa simpson electric guitar build this is the neck for the lisa simpson guitar and like i've said in the lap <laughs> last times i've been doing this i've showed this process so many times so just to go through the greatest hits First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten the neck with my straight edge and my Allen wrench. Make sure it's completely straight. Then tape it off and we'll see when I get it. So I got it straight. The neck straight. Perfectly straight. Before I get that done, I'm going to go ahead and knock out these fret ends. As you see, they're always completely sharp when you first get these necks. So let me go ahead and get that. I got my fret end file. And let me dress all the frets and fret ends. And yep, sharp. And we'll see you in a little bit. All right, fret ends complete. Oh yeah, rounded and yeah, nice and smooth. If it'll focus for me. All right, time to tape off, and I always try to do minimal tool marks. I know it's kind of unavoidable, but all right, now we'll tape it up, and we'll be right back. All right, got all the frets taped up. I'm going to go ahead and mark all the frets with my sharpie, and then I've got my 320 grit sandpaper on my medium size leveling beam. And I'm going to go ahead and level all the frets to each other. And I'll get that done and I'll be right back. Alright, got all the frets level. And there was quite a few high frets. This one was really high. As you can see, the material, a lot of material was taken off and so was that one. And I knew that when I was setting it up. Remember when I was did a test run on the strings the first time? But I went through the rocker arm and we're all good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and remark them. And then I'm going to get my Z centered z file and i'm going to go ahead and put a crown on all the frets and we'll see when i get that done all right, see you in a bit. okay got a perfect crown on all the frets see if the uh, camera will pick it up all right they are looking awesome and no more high frets no more low frets we are good to go all right next step is b of course to go through the sandpapers and i'm going to round started with uh and I'm going with this time around, I'm going with 600, 800, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, all right, 2,500 by the way, um, 5,000, 7,000, 8,000, uh, 10,000, up to 12,000. So I'm going to go through all the grits and get all these frets rounded, polished, and smooth. And we'll see in a couple hours. This process usually takes about a couple hours. So, all right, we'll see when I get all that done. Just wanna show you how they look now. Very rough, but perfectly crowned and leveled. And fret ends still feel pretty sweet. All right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, a couple hours later, whoo. And we are leveled, crowned, and polished. And I just wanted to show you how brilliant the frets turn out when I do this process. You know, I've done so many fret, fret jobs like this. I mean, I've done so many, probably in the hundreds now. But I tell you, it's still such a satisfying uh, process. I mean, there's so much work involved, and it takes so long. But when you get to the end result... And especially if you do it right and the neck plays beautifully and it looks amazing it's just uh, <laughs> I tell you what I just love it and I wanted to show you with all the ugly tape still on it but let me go ahead and get the neck cleaned up take the tape off get myself cleaned up clean up my mess and I'll show you in a sec we'll be right back all right got everything cleaned up I got my mess cleaned up I got myself cleaned up took all the tape off and this reservoir it's kind of dry but during the assembly phase i will definitely hydrate it and make it awesome but yeah and it's just so amazing and all the fret ends feel perfect smooth yeah let's see if i can get a close-up oh yeah real close up there and it's just amazing How close can I get? Oh yeah, I can get really close now. Sometimes I can get close, sometimes I can't. Let's see how the fret ends with minimal f tool marks. Alright, looks good. 
All right, so the next step is going to go online and see if we can find... Thinking about doing the same thing like I have in the past on the Bart guitar, doing like Lisa, L-I-S-A, and four letters, so it's not going to be too bad. So, but the thing of it is, the L is probably going to have to start there, and then I-S-A, yeah, that should work out pretty good. L, I, and then S in the middle of the S, and then the A. So, yeah, all right, so let me go online and see if I can find a font or whatnot, and then we'll be back. We'll see you next step. But all the frets have been level crowned and polished, and that's the way you want to see it. So, all right, we'll see you in a little while. All right, did find a couple pictures, but some fonts for Lisa. I'm not too crazy about some of the fonts that I've found so far. There's this font here, but it's very, uh, the picture's very small, and uh, I guess I like that font somewhat, but it is a little bit, it's not solid. And then the only other picture that I was able to find was this one here, and that font seems a little... I don't know, just not good for this particular... It's the Simpson font, I guess. But I'm not sure if that font's going to be good. So let me uh, break out PowerPoint and see if we can find... And, uh, oh yeah. Working on that guitar. Oh, new project. Yeah, let's see. And we can go with different fonts here. Alright. Let me see if I can find a decent font and I'll be right back. Alright, I think I got a font that I like. So I've got the physical neck and then I've got a picture of the neck. And then I match up the size like I did before, like I've shown before in the past videos. So I got the size matched up. So let me go ahead and apply the font to it and then manipulate the font to where I need to cover the fifth and the third dot with the font. So let me get that going. I'll be right back. All right, I think I've come up with something I like, something I can work with. I think that's going to look cool. I like the fact that it's kind of like at an angle upward. This font, I had to kind of each letter I had to individually paste and I had to paste a little piece there and a little piece there so kind of custom all right so the next step is going to be I'm going to take off the picture of the guitar neck and then I'm going to save this picture and then make it bigger and then touch it up and I'll be right back all right here's what I came up with final the final outcome of the font of course it's going to be white you know I'm going to change the color and show how it's going to look on the fretboard Pretty cool. That's gonna look like that. Pretty cool. And then I'm gonna paint the front of the headstock red to match the clothing. But yeah, that's gonna be pretty killer. Alright, so let me uh, get out the creative machine and figure all that out, and we'll see you next step. Alright, got the Cricut machine going. Got the Cricut design space. Cricut. Everything set up. Let's see if I can get the right size. I didn't really measure, so I'm gonna kind of guess until I get it right. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna use the straight vinyl again. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. All right, get it all taped up. I think we're ready for some paint. Let's see the reflection of where it's Lisa. All right, let me apply some white paint. <laughs> Fingers crossed. We'll see in a little bit. All right successful application of paint. Let me take the tape off and see how we did. See you in a little bit. Alright, we have total success of the inlay. Application of the inlay looks great. That is cool. Yeah. I think that turned out way good. <laughs> cool. Alright, so we'll let this dry for a day or so. And then we'll do the red on the top part of the headstock. But yeah, uh, paint still curing on the body. Yellow's looking pretty good. Everything's working out great. 
I'm gonna wait a little, couple more days and start applying the other colors. But yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, and I put a little black around the edges as you see. All right, hope everybody's having a good night and hopefully we'll see you soon. All right, just a quick update on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar bill. It's time to go ahead and paint the back cover access panel plates for the pedometers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these painted. <laughs> be pretty cool. All right, and we'll see when I get that done. All right, successfully painted the back cover plates. They're looking pretty good. <laughs> nice and smooth. All right, they're still wet, so we're gonna let these dry. All right, looks pretty good. Pretty cool. All right. All right, just an update on Lisa Simpson electric guitar build. Putting the first touches, first layers of white and red. Uh, white turned out pretty good. It's gonna take many, many layers hand painting it. Uh, on the back it reacted a little bit because I expected that because it was a big old thick layer of yellow. So gonna try a layer of red and I'll see you in a bit. But yeah, that's just one layer. It's gonna be many, many layers, probably about five, six layers all together. So probably about a day dry in between. But all right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, quick update. Got the first layer of colors on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar. Looks pretty cool. Still kind of wet and it's an awkward position to hold it. <laughs> Looks pretty cool though. Yeah, I'm probably gonna do probably need to about five, six coats. But yeah, I just wanted to show you real quick. <laughs> All right. So, and I'll take a bunch of pictures, but yeah. And then we're gonna go 2K clear coat, probably about two cans over the top of everything when it's done. So it's gonna look amazing. All right, <laughs> pretty cool. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, just a quick update on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar build. I put the second coat of red and white and it's looking better. It's probably gonna need about another three coats or so. I just wanted to show you the white turned out really cool and the red is definitely getting more uniform and darker and like I keep saying after I put the 2k clear coat it's gonna make it look you know like all level and perfect so all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the neck out and I'm gonna tape that up and then we're gonna apply some red to the front of the headstock. I've had the logo drying for a couple days so it should be good so I'm gonna get some paper towel tape it up and then the front section i um, gonna be red so we'll see when I get that done see you in a little bit all right successful painting of the headstock looking awesome yeah turned out good no complaints no problems all right we'll let this set for a couple days and then we'll apply a white logo and that'll conclude today's progress on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar bell <laughs> looking good all right we'll see you later I right, just wanted to show you I took off the uh the covering <laughs> the paper towel so, looks pretty cool Lisa all right we'll see you in a bit all right how's everybody doing Friday the 13th January 13th 2023 and it's time to continue work on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar build uh, if you've seen this post earlier or later I completed the headstock logo on the Sonic the Hedgehog guitar now it's the Lisa Simpson and I got everything set up so let me go ahead and print out a logo and apply it to the headstock. Fingers crossed everything goes well and we will see you soon. All right, see you in a sec. All right, we have successful application of the headstock logo on the Lisa Simpson guitar neck. So it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it just takes patience and a lot of steady hand. <laughs> that vinyl does not cooperate with you at all. So, All right, next step is going to be to put some 2K clear coat over it. But I'm going to wait to do that once I get all the body base colors complete and full and, you know, looking bright and vibrant. And then we'll do the 2K clear coat just on the front of the headstock, covering the logo, sealing it in and making it really glossy. But yeah, looks pretty killer. Good old cricket machine. Never failed yet anyway. <laughs> so, all right. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. And we will see you uh, next couple days. And Gonna be working on the other ones, get them all done. Uh, the 
Gizmo Electric Guitars ready for gonna be ready for assembly here after the 2K clears in about three days. So looking forward to doing that. Alright, we'll see you soon. Good evening everybody. It is January 15, 2023, and it is time for another update on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar build. As you can see, all the base colors have been completed, and I probably put about five coats of each color on there as far as the white, the black, and the red, and it is looking killer. Yeah, definitely sets it all off, so... All right, next step is going to be like on the other guitar, like on the Sonic guitar, to let this cure for about four or five days to let it completely set and make sure the paint is completely cured. And then we'll go with a can of 2K clear coat. And then we'll see if we, after a couple days after that dries, we'll see if we are in need of another can of 2K clear coat. But that'll be determined when we get to that point. Just wanted to show you, it looks pretty killer. Pretty sweet. This guitar has turned out amazing. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Yeah. And we will see you soon. Continue work. We're going to start the Gremlin guitar soon. Next day or so. So, all right. Everybody have a good night and we will see you soon. All right. Good morning, everybody. It is January 20th, 2022. And it's time to continue work on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar build. And all the base colors have been drying for a while. Got a fresh can of 2K clear coat. Just finished coating the Sonic the Hedgehog guitar. And just want to show you how it looks prior to the paint. I just did the headstock. And the headstock went uneventful. So I don't anticipate anything going bad. As far as paint reactions on this guitar. So I had a few paint reactions on the Sonic. But I think they were good. And with a second can, it's just going to make it look pretty awesome. So, all right, we'll see you in a little bit. Fingers crossed. What's everybody doing? It's January 20th, 2023. And we've got an update on the Lisa Simpson electric guitar build. Did apply the layered one can of 2K clear coat. I think one can is going to be sufficient on this build. I think I'm going to put a second can on the Sonic the Hedgehog. But yeah, I just wanted to show you how good it turned out. I've got it on the hanger here. But maybe we can get some good pictures of it. How good the 2K clear coat really brought out all the colors. Had zero reaction. I gave it plenty of time to cure. So as you can see, and there were no drips, no anomalies, no anything bad, <laughs> which is always a plus. I'll have to look over it and make sure that everything got coated in here in a while when it cures a little bit more. Let's see if I can possibly take it off the hanger without bumping it very carefully. Let's see if I can do this. I might be able to. I just don't want to. Okay. There we go. I'm going to hold it a certain way. Yeah, it's hard to see the reflection because I can't really... Hold on. Let me move the camera over. All right. There. Whoop. Can't do it. It's hard to hold it that way. But yeah, look at that. Wow. It really did shine it up really nice. Looks really good. I wonder if the camera's really catching how vibrant that yellow and the red is. That is amazing. All right, let me flip it over. Okay. Got the back of the instrument. Wow, look at that. <laughs> it turned out amazing. That is so awesome. Pretty cool. Not too shabby. So, all right, we'll let this care for about three, four days, and then we'll be ready for assembly. All right, we'll see you soon. One last quick one of the neck. How the neck turned out. Really cool. No reaction at all. And the Lisa font turned out amazing. And I put 2K clear coat over that when I put it over the other neck, so we're good. Alright, everybody's having a good day, we'll see you soon. 
Good afternoon, everyone. I am pleased to announce it is time. Whew, it's been a long time coming, but it is time to assemble the Lisa Simpson electric guitar. As you can see, I've got all my parts, got my tools, got everything I need. Let me, as usual, per usual, let me just show you how the clear coat turned out. How awesome it looks. Uh, that looks amazing. We've had plenty of time to cure for the 2K clear coat last round. So we are good to go for assembly. All right. <clears throat> In our ways, always first step is to install the ground wire. I am so excited for this one. This one is going to be so killer. So, all right. So, I'm um, going to go ahead and install the ground wire, feed it through to the control cavity to the pedometer cavity and we'll be right back as you recall we've got push pull pot for the volume we've got tone we've got coil split for the single coil but let me go ahead and get the ground wire and feed it through and we'll be right back all right got the ground wire pulled through and installed now it's time to install the bridge all right install the bridge and we'll see when i get that done i'm so excited this is going to be so awesome all right see you in a little bit all right, successful installation of the bridge. Looks pretty good. All right, next step is going to be the pickup and feed the pickup through and mount the pickup and feed it through to the pedometer cabin. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, successful installation of the pickup. It looks pretty good. All right, so now we're going to wire up and feed through the input jack. So we're going to go with uh, white and red for hot. And I'll see if we can get that done. All right, I got my uh, tone pot all wired up, and I pre-wired my push-pull coil split pot. And we're gonna go ahead and install the uh, tone knob in the hole and feed the wires through and get ready to wire the complete guitar. All right, see a little bit. Oh, by the way, we did uh, <laughs> install the input jack and then fed the wires through to the first cavity. All right, I'll see you in a bit. All right, feeling pretty confident. That was kind of a nightmare to stuff all that. <laughs> it was extra wires in there. Uh, I think I'm going to put the uh, back cover plates on, then we'll do a full test, so I'll see you in a little bit. All right, back cover plates are installed, and it's looking pretty good. It is a little bit trickier than I would have liked, but we got it done. No ill effects on anything. All right, we're going to turn it over and do a sound test. I'll be right back. All right, ready to do a full-on sound test we got the hot lead all right let's turn the volume all the way down as per tradition got the volume knobs on looks pretty cool coil split all right so we are plugged in that's always a good sign no humming no buzzing that's important all right let me get something to tap with it okay all right so all right so what we'll do first we've got both uh Turn the volume all the way up, and hopefully we get some taps. All right, all right, on both. Sounds good. And now we'll we'll take the tone and turn it down. Oh, definitely muffled. Hear that? Cool, great. Turn the uh, tone back up. All right, all right. Now we'll split the coil, and we should only get the bottom. Got the bottom, you can hear the artifact, and we'll get the top. Nope, nothing, so we're split, so. And then we go back down, we're not split. See how you got the scratch? It's got the scratch, perfect. We are wired and good to go. Whew, that was kind of, wasn't as easy as and smooth as some of the other builds, but we got it done, so all right. So let me go put this back on the hanger clean up my considerable mess and then we'll start working on the neck uh, install the, the string trees and the tuning keys and all that good stuff all right so i'll see you in a little bit all right it's looking good though hey lisa i'm getting ready to rock some chords all right we'll see you in a sec all right got the non-essentials put away got the neck out it's looking awesome all right time to install the string trees and the tuning keys all right, we'll see when I get that done. 
Alright, got the tuning keys and the string trees installed and it's looking amazing. Wow, that turned out really good. I'm really happy with that. That looks awesome. Alright, as per tradition, <laughs> set this over here. Away from everything and time to get the guitar body back out here. Take off the, uh, the hanger and then we'll get these two together. I'm excited. It's going to be awesome. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, we got the neck and the body. And we're going to get these two together and see what happens. All right, this is the moment we I've been waiting for for a while now. Oh, she looks amazing. Uh, all right, so fingers crossed. I don't predict anything going anywhere because it's, it's a pretty straightforward. I don't think there's any paint that got into the neck pocket, so... All right, and we're going to connect the body to the neck, and we'll see when we get that done. All right, we have successful joining of the neck to the body, and it went pretty uneventful, pretty smooth. <laughs> she looks amazing. Oh, I love this. I love building guitars. Oh, man, when it comes together like that, that is just so amazing. Look at that. It's just so cool. Wow. I am so happy with how it's turned out. <laughs> it's just so cool. Wow. Alright. Next step. Wow, that is just amazing. Isn't that a bit? That's just amazing. Oh, I love it. This is why I do this. This is. Oh, man. After all that work, it finally comes together, and it's just, it just looks so cool. All right, so the next step's going to be, obviously, as always, to treat the neck um, with my favorite stuff. There you go, making that popping noise again with my mouth. Feed and wax. I'm going to get some Q-tips and get the neck uh, nice and saturated, <laughs> so it makes it nice and saturated nice and good <laughs> i'm just babbling here but all right so let me do that and we'll see this all right next is saturated and looking good all right we're ready for some strings and as per usual any balls 52 to 10s and we're going to line up the two e strings make sure the neck and everything all my measurements and everything is perfectly aligned and we'll see you when i get that done all right see you in a little bit all right, got both these strings on and everything is perfectly aligned. Look at that dead center. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. All right, let me get the rest of the strings on. We'll see you in a bit. All right, got the whole strings on. She looks amazing. And see how everything is lined up so perfectly. <laughs> this is too cool. I'm going to go ahead and install the strap buttons. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and install the strap buttons and we'll be right back. That's looking awesome. Alright, strap buttons have been installed. <laughs> That's awesome. Alright. So let me go ahead and get it up to pitch. Get it intonated. Get a quick uh, sound on it and everything. <laughs> see how everything worked out. Alright, we'll see a little bit. Alright, I just want to give a quick uh, sound test. I got her dialed in a little bit. Quick little intonation and everything like that. But... <laughs> <laughs> More strings are still stretching, so. <laughs> Sounds great.
<laughs> Very cool shape. Wow. Just wanted to give you a quick uh in the uh the coil split sounds amazing. It's the full humbucker. It's a mini humbucker, but it's uh, you know a full humbucker, and the uh, given the. Anyway, <laughs> strings are still stretching, but wow, it turned out amazing. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Yeah, all right. And I'll let this settle overnight as usual. And then tomorrow I'll do a full on uh, sound test and sound demonstration. I got something very special planned for that. And then I'll do a full photo shoot. Um, and an extreme up close and personal and all the usual things but yeah so Lisa Simpson guitar is finished assembled and uh, I'll get it dialed in tomorrow make it real perfect but yeah I still love the fact that it stands <laughs> guitar stands on its own so that's cool so all right hope everybody's having a good beginning of the week and we will see you soon. Yeah, I got the action dialed in. Plays perfectly, but you know, I always like to let it settle a little bit. But yeah, that coil split, that pickup is really cool. I think it's a, it's a Wilkinson. I'll have to show you. But yeah, pretty cool shape. You don't see something like that every day. All right, and we'll see you soon. All right, I bet you predicted this coming. <laughs> One more update before I finish for today. Ah, brother and sister side by side. <laughs> All right. We have got Bart and Lisa Simpson guitars. Pretty sweet, gotta say. <laughs> uh, that is just awesome. All right. I just had to. Very cool. <laughs> There you go. All right, so we're gonna have to do Maggie. Uh, we're gonna have to do uh, all the Simpsons together. So, got three more to make. We got Marge, we got Homer, and we got Maggie. So there we go. All right, everybody, have a good day. We'll see you soon. Good.
good, 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 good. One more to go for this round. And then we'll start some more. <laughs> hey, how's everybody doing? It is January 28th, 2023. And this is the voiceover for the Lisa Simpson electric guitar build. Wow. This uh, guitar was, uh, oh, it's all, as, as all the guitars I make, it was just such a joy and such fun to actually make. Uh, there were a few obstacles I did have to overcome. Obviously, if you've watched this build from the beginning, um, you see that I had a little debacle with the paint and the, uh, the primer that I used at first that cracked the, uh, you know, cracked the superficial wood and made it, you know, really porous and everything and I had to go in there with a second round of wood grain filler and everything like that but you know it's a learning lesson so I know what not to do next time and what to do um, and the wood itself I think was kind of dry so it really kind of added to the actual cracking of the wood but as you can see it turned out pretty good um, that 2k clear coat is definitely essential it did react a little bit with the white pearls in the back and with the yellow in the back, just a little bit. You can't barely notice it, but, you know, I always try to perfect the paint process. It's always been, the paint process has always been the most difficult for me so far, uh, just to kind of perfect it and get it right. But, yeah, the, uh, this one is really cool. It turned out really good. The, uh, the font on the fretboard there, as you see there, the Lisa, turned out really good. Um... And uh, overall, I mean, it was not that bad as far as any problems or anything. I really didn't, can't remember other than that one with the, with the finish and everything like that. But yeah, uh, I really like these necks. I uh, bought probably like five of these necks. Um, and it really turned out good doing all the fret work and everything like that. Um, yeah, I plan on doing three more Elisa or uh, Simpsons themed guitars. Uh, of course, we've got to do the Maggie, uh, Marge, or Mar um, the Maggie, Homer, and Marge guitars. So that's going to be in the near future this year. Uh, that's a really good hot pickup there. That uh, pickup sounds really good. You see the the basic the uh, quick video of the uh, sound demonstration, and it sounded out pretty good. And I, I do these uh, voiceovers as always on the fly, so I don't have it scripted or anything. So I just looking at the video and just anything a recollection of the build itself so yeah I really like that shape uh, it is kinda weird when you're sitting in your lap there's really nothing for your legs to kinda grip on other than that I mean when you're standing up and it's on the strap but even if you're sitting and you have the strap on it's it's uh, it didn't sound good when you have the strap on the instrument it uh... It, it, it flows and it plays perfect, yeah. Didn't have any really problem with the neck. The, I guess there was a few high frets, low frets on the neck, but, you know, doing all the level crowning and polishing with the frets and everything like that usually takes care of anything, any problems like that. But, yeah, in the back there, the, uh, the this uh, guitar has the coil split capability with that small pickup. It's a full humbucker, but it's got two coils on it. So, and you can see right there with the, uh, the red, back access panel plate um, I didn't dremel out deep enough for that and it, it it's fine it fit in there but as you can see if you look really close it kind of bows out in the center there because it was right at <laughs> the maximum and I guess I could have sanded the uh, the access cover plate or used a really thin one like the metal ones that I do have pieces of metal I could have just used a really thin one uh, but actually the ground, yeah, I guess it wouldn't have mattered. The, the ground is right there, but yeah, and you could even see in the back a little bit, the wood grain, just a little bit where it was cracking from before. And here's the full photo shoot. So I always like to do a uh, really up close, extreme up close and personal video, I call it, on the guitar itself, just to show how cool it looks in video. And then also in uh, pictures. So these photos I took, and as the volume, you see the volume the volume knob there has the coil split, so it pulls out and pops down. And it's really cool. It's really neat where the placement of the input jack was, and the strap buttons are just perfect. The guitar hangs and balances well. There's no neck dive at all, so yeah, it looks pretty cool. 
and I really love the shape. Uh, all the colors, uh, the colors really turned out good. And I spray painted the yellow like you've seen, and then brushed the red, white, and black. And then after I brushed uh, to eliminate any kind of brush marks or anything, which are really small, I went with a can of 2K clear coat. And I used that Spray Max uh, 2K clear coat, and that just it hardens the paint, and it's just it's just amazing. So yeah. Uh, I always suggest that if you ever want to get into guitar building, uh, if you watch my videos from the past, you see it's it's not you know it's it's a learning process and there are a lot of lessons to be learned because it's not a simple thing to do. Um, but once you start and you get on that mission, I just I always strive to, to, to be the best builder I can be. And I know my methods are a little bit unconventional because I use the plywood for the wood. But I think it, it allows me to make these really radical shapes because if you were to try to to have this, you know, just a solid piece of wood and try to dremel out some of these shapes to where the wiring needs to go, it'd be somewhat difficult because, uh, but that's just, I, I like it. And I've I found that these guitars have definitely held up. I mean, I've been making them out of plywood for like a couple years now. And some of the ones that I made in the beginning, they're still just holding up. They're, uh, the wood is, you know, people talk about tone woods and different kind of woods and everything like that. But I think plywood, it's definitely not a bad option. And I think some of the earlier 80s guitar companies, they actually use plywood. I'm not sure of their method, but yeah. Yeah, that those necks are pretty cool, the headstock with the logos and everything like that. But, uh... Uh, that's basically about it with this guitar so I really appreciate everybody watching um, the build from the very beginning from the drawings I make the drawings to the cutting out of the wood and then the drumming out of everything and you know cutting out for the wiring cavities and then you know, the body filler ugly phase part one and two as I like to call it and uh, it's just it's just such an awesome thing. I get so much joy and it's such gratification when the guitar comes together and and I put it on the social media and people really like what I do. And I really enjoy playing these guitars. I mean, I basically play all of them. I don't play them all every day because I have so many of them. But uh, over time, I eventually get around to playing them. And it's, it's such a thrill to, to put it on and just, you know, rip out some chords with these guitars. So, all right. Hope everybody's having a good... 2023 wow we're coming to the end of the first month already it's already at one twelfth over and it's just begun so time just flies so fast so fast so i just say love and cherish each other uh time is short um try to be the best you can be at anything that you pursue and uh we will see you on the next build um stay Brian Pan's guitars on Facebook and then right here on the Brian Raglan channel is my social media that I like to post all these guitars on so we will see you on the next build everybody have a good one and we'll see you soon